Uh, filler powders and, and, and how do we use them? Um, you know, we all know a little bit about them. Can you tell us a little bit about um, about what we what we have available and, and what we do um, what we do to make them into glues and fillers and things like that? Phil? Yeah, I mean, filler powder is much the same. Um, you know, we have micro balloons, colloidal silica, um, glass bubbles, uh, and cotton powders for for a myriad of, of um, thickening uh, adhesives and, and fairing applications for a general purpose epoxy. The whole range is there. I think the fundamental difference with this uh, resin system is we we've discovered uh, we haven't discovered everyone who's used epoxy has probably seen occasionally fillers can slump a little bit uh, with silica added to it. So we we've um, formulated this to work much better with with a new kind of silica, a silica that doesn't attract moisture. Um, you know, Simon's put some nice slides up here. You can see before with traditional um, silicas and, and then afterwards it tends to fall over a bit. I, I think all of us have done a fillet or a cove joint with thickened epoxy resin and, and, and noticed that, you know, the middle of the cove start to bulge at times and you're looking at it going, oh no, that's that's going to create a horrible bit of sanding for me, you know, with my fingertips with, with 80 or 60 grit the next day. But with the Ampro, we, we've got this uh, newer silica. It, it's not hydroscopic, so it doesn't uh, allow water into it in dry form. It creates a better um, thickened product in the marine environment and it doesn't slump. You also use less of it. So traditionally, you just throw more silica in to get it stiffer. This you can use a precise amount of silica to get the, the right amount of, of stiffened mix that you need. So, you know, it's a win-win, it's a better product. You use less of it, so you don't have to buy so much. So, you know, there's a bit of a trade there, but really nice to use. The silica is uh, it's finer. It's rather like, more like caster sugar than, than granulated sugar. So when you blend it into the uh, thickened uh, or, or the, the epoxy mixture, um, you don't get those sort of bubbles appearing and, and those lumps appearing. It, it goes in a much finer mixture. So a re an improvement with the, silica in the Ampro, the rest of the rest of it's pretty much the same. Do you know what? I learned something there, Phil, because all those fillets, like you, I used to do all those fillet joints around bulkheads and things like that. And I always thought it was the epoxy getting hot, which is why it would slump um, halfway through when I had a nice thick mix. I never knew it was that big bag of cabasil. That's quite cool. OK, um, right. Um, it, we're just to just to show you some of the filler powders again. We're going to switch back over to our friends at um, uh, at, at the uh, application centre, um, and uh, hopefully Steve and the and the guys are there, and they'll take us through some filler powders. So um, as two filler powders that have been mentioned in the presentation, uh, here's the resin mixes I did earlier. So might as well use what we've got. Um, Micro balloons, the most common one that most people know, the brown filler. Um, this is low density. And basically, I just want to do not splurge that out like that. Um, further blending, we're going to do a mix of micro balloons, and then we'll do a mix of um, microfibers. And I'll just mix that into the resin first. So always put your filler powder in first before we start talking about the silica that has been obviously discussed already. So obviously, when you put your micro balloons in, what you'll end up with is another liquid that is still very, very runny. There's no thick or viscosity increase really given by the fillers. That all comes from your silica that you add in later. So if I just leave that one there for the moment, I will then get the same using the microfiber mix powder. Now, most people know that this product will end up giving you a, a relatively lumpy texture anyway, just because of the nature of the filler. There's not much you can do about that. So it's not always used for a cosmetic filler, but fill it did bonded joint, but um, it is by far the stronger filler. So again, I'll just put that in. So I'm again, if I, want, some exercise there, Steve. if I wanted to tip this upside down, it is moving. Um, again, it needs the silica to stabilize it, but it is a little bit more of a grainy mix. So the silica that we've talked of is obviously our new Ampro silica. Um, actually in the bucket, you won't notice any difference. It looks and feels and has exactly the same uh, reactions. It is very blowable. It does move very easily in air. So do be careful with it. Um, but basically, once mixed in, it's, here we go. Steve, I've got a quick question. Yeah, go um, for it. 
What's, what do you still do you need to use the same amount of silica the new silica as the last one did someone say to me that you could use less of it was i right in hearing that yeah exactly so what we've worked out so far is that we can use about 20 about 75 percent of what we used to so i think we used to you propose about four percent addition by weight which obviously looks very different in a, in the powder form it's more like three percent addition for your normal thick addition that you're looking for okay so there we go. That's my mix now. I'll take the lolly stick out. Fully stable with just the addition of that silica. The mix is actually, it's quite smooth. What I'll do here is I'll just mix this and spread it onto my bit of wood so you can actually see how smooth this reacts. So I don't know how easy that is to see on the screen, but basically it's it's not too lumpy at all, and that's mainly driven by the silica that we're now using. I'll just do exactly the same on the micro balloon. I like to mix it quite gently to start with until it's got actually into the resin. I used to uh, I used to walk backwards when I was doing that job. Uh, <laughs> yeah, walk backwards or go near an open door to what, just be careful, let it blow away from you. That, that has its own hazards walking backwards around a boat shed, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and, and, and I'm um, put a little bit more in. Um, these 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 recommended mixes. Did I hear Martin tell me the other day that they're actually on the on the information slip in the boxes as well? Exactly. Yeah, the same as before on the packaging. You inside you'll have a little fold up piece of paper, and that is fully described of how to make filler mixes used for bonding, filleting, fairing, um, she the uh, just general purpose mixes. Mostly, as you can see, that I'm doing this comes a lot of practice will come experience will come from practice and you will end up creating your own blends as you go. Right, so here we go. This is the micro balloon mix. So here we can see basically this is shapeable and very smooth to the surface. Now nice. I've been making a demonstrator for exhibitions using all this system and it is very easy to just apply, get a very smooth radius and if you need to tickle off like those lovely little 3D internal corners, sanding it down is no problem at all. Uh, and if you're doing timber uh, with the overcoat window that Phil was talking about a minute ago, if you yeah. wanted to resin coat something, but I mean, sometimes we use the micro balloons on a wood coating because it's brown, doesn't it? And, and yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. but it, so if we do a neat job of that, we can actually come back and flow coat it with resin pretty soon afterwards. Um, uh, is that right? Without using peel ply and things like that? Yeah, yeah, once it's stiffened up, you can go over it. So you can go wet on tack, you can go on it tacky, or you mm. can leave it for up to those four four days. Obviously, the four days are in ideal conditions. You don't want to be, I wouldn't say you get four days at 40 degrees C if you're using it in the tropics. You're going to be a bit cautious there. Uh, <laughs> things will have passed on. But yes, in your normal working environments, you'll get those four days to go on to it. Thank you, Steve. We'll Steve, come back, we'll to, come you back to you in a second, second if that's okay. okay. And back to questions from Chris. Have you got any for us? Yeah, so just one about fillers. Uh, I think I've been asked this by every nipper that's ever worked for me. Which filler combination is the easiest to sand? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve, do you want to answer that while you're on? Yeah, so, so hands up. It's the brown one. So <laughs> micro balloons, it's a polymeric bead. It's plastic. Um, it's very easy to sand. Um, the next one on from there is the glass bead because um, it's, a, it's just a, a, a glass version of the same thing. Um, the, probably the worst in the end becomes and to get a decent finish is your um, microfibers. But yeah, if you want to do a fairing, if you're doing a fairing of anything, then the easiest material to use is the micro balloon. Just, cool. to, just to add a little point to it, because I know I used to do it, and uh, being in the paint world these days, is that um, it, the more micro balloons you put in, 
um, and less colloidal silica, the easier it is to sand. But remember, the colloidal silica is a thickening agent that's also helping with the strength. So if you ram it full of microbloons and make it easier to sand, by some of its strength. The other thing is, is that you can you find yourself getting away putting it up really thick. If you get it up really thick, you'll still get an, a, a, an exothermic reaction, and uh, you get little bubbles in it, which you have to deal with again before you uh, before you go over with it. So just watch out for that. Um, that's uh, something I learned the hard way. That's for sure. So uh, <laughs> okay. Right.